Hi, everyone. Hello, Mohan. Hi, Victor. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks. Good morning. Hi, Ted. Uh, we'll give it until five after uh, to get started. We do have a Google Doc with notes and where folks can add their names. We appreciate it in any agenda item. I just posted to the Zoom chat. Does anyone have any topics they'd like to add to the agenda? No, no yet. All right. A couple of minutes. Think about them. Hi, everyone. Hi, Oliver. Morning. Hello. Hmm. All right, we can get started. And everyone, repost the link into Zoom chat. All right. And I will share my screen. Okay, um, let's see. So there's a microservice cloud CNF um, paper about one concern per container. Got published. Don't know if anyone's seen this yet, but um, it's recently. Yeah, yeah. Who's um? Who's really interesting? I can't remember whether it was on Twitter or Slack somewhere. There was a there was a good discussion of whether it was an appropriate set of examples, but I think the general gist of it seems to deal with the problems Gerge had, I think, um, from a few weeks back, a couple of months ago. All right. Um, do you think the 
where, wherever you saw that discussion, would it be something good to link to in a, I think we have a related GitHub issue here. I'm not, I'm not sure what um, discussion you saw, but if there's some interesting conversation. Yeah, I, I agree we should. I'm trying to find it. <laughs> All right. Because we already had a bit of a discussion just in the GitHub issue, which was, um, you know, many months old here. So if we can continue that, I think that'll be good. I, I just received a, a comment in my LinkedIn um, post. Um, and I encourage the, the, the person to put the, the comment on, on this uh, um, discussion. So, but it seems like he didn't, he didn't put that information. Oh yeah, it may have been LinkedIn actually, yeah. All right. Well, um, if you do find it, Tom, um, would you yeah. drop the link into the issue? Yeah, we'll do, yeah. So we don't have a pull request yet um, for this one or a, a separate document, but I think, you know, this would be a big write-up or material could be pulled. Uh, what do y'all think as far as uh, moving forward and, and starting a draft on this, a, a Google Doc that we could start writing at? Good idea. Yeah, I think that'd be a good thing to start creating. All right. Mm, yeah, I don't think I created a, a Google Doc for that one kind of jump on ahead but all right um i will let me let me go ahead and put that as something down here and then we'll come back to it here in a few minutes um create draft um google uh, or that. All right. Let's see. So this one is not upcoming. It's done. MWC Barcelona. Um, anyone have folks that went? Any highlights or things to talk about? I'm going to delete that. Anyone go or have colleagues that went? Yeah, my, my boss went. Um, his his feedback seemed to be along the lines of it was the first one he was aware of where mobile devices wasn't the kind of headline event or focus. Um, so quite often MWCs focused on you know iPhones, Androids, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But there seems to be, from his point of view, more discussion about the sustainability of telco in general, um, and also less discussion about 6G than he was expecting. I saw a, what is it, a telco TV or the telecom TV um, mm -hmm. discussion where there was, it was around 6G and 5G and where the focus should be. 
and it definitely seemed like a, a pretty strong split between that um not just really getting 5g fully deployed but even that there's a lot to explore left on the one side and then uh some folks feeling like almost like it just need to be jumped over and and head right to 6g so if there's i wonder if because of the the split on how people feel about that if it's I mean, it seems like sometimes you know, the conflict would have increased the discussion, but I don't know. Maybe there wasn't enough people that were willing to talk about it to put this forward. Possibly, yeah. Um, and it may, it may also have been, you know, the expectation he had versus, um, you know, his, his expectation may have been that there would have been loads of discussion about 6G. Um, and, and maybe there wasn't. I think the other the other thing you mentioned was there was quite a lot of discussion, especially around the Vodafone stand about open RAM um, and how that um, can and should be um, adopted at scale. Um, but again, that that might have been just his view from where he was in, for quite a lot of the conference. What about private 5G? Um, it's not something you mentioned, but I know that Vodafone, for example, had the announcement about um, essentially private 5G on a Raspberry Pi and trying to drive the cost of that down so that it's affordable for anyone. And they had a fairly similar cost to a, a broadband router. Um, I, he, he didn't sort of, he didn't mention it in his summary of things that he took away from the event. Was that announced at MWC? It was announced before MWC, like the week before. And so, you know, people may have been aware of it when they went to the stand. I can share a link if you like. Yeah, that'd be great. Is, it, is that like a proof of concept or a, a full product? I think it's termed a prototype at the moment. Um, but I think the idea is that it's, um, it's something that will, will drive further. I'll put the link to it in the chat. All right. That could be something interesting for us to explore. Um, reject all cookies. Yeah. Lime Microsystems, a miniature 5G base station. Yeah, basically. And then it was demonstrated. So he was, maybe he wasn't doing the demonstration? Maybe he wasn't part of that demonstration? Who, hey, my boss? No, he wouldn't have been. He would have been aware it was happening.
All right. Um, I think that there's a lot that we can explore um, on the whole private 5G side, and there's overlap into all the Kubernetes edge, of course. A lot of the, the different groups, there's some overlap where we could look at best practices. Maybe the even it shrinks things down like onboarding of CNFs. What are you doing on the edge? It starts getting focused on smaller areas rather than a workload that may have 30 different pieces. Of course, you can have those in a private 5G, but the private 5G, you may have, have it spread out and uh, for specific um, areas that's providing service. It, are you directly involved with that group, Tom? No, no, no. so um, that will be, that would have been done at our R&D center in Malaga, which I'm not, not part of or particularly linked to. Um, I kind of, I, I'm, I'm more involved in the mobile core cloud stuff which i know is linked from a functional point of view but it, it's a very different um sort of part of the business understand i think something like that could be an interesting thing to demo and talk about it at telco day uh, yeah, it would have been um, a bit late for this upcoming one, but um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find out who's involved and um, make them aware of this group. Sounds good. Come along and, you know, because I, I, I tend to agree with you, it's, it'd be really interesting to see how some of the core functions have been shrunk um, to the point where they can run on a Raspberry Pi compared to yeah. the dimensioning that we see in the, in the mobile core for a kind of countrywide deployment. Yeah, the being able to limit the context could allow us to focus in on one area and talk about benefits yeah. and other things. I mean, of course, then you can talk about caveats and other stuff, but being able to at least have the dialogue in a more focused area, I, I think, has been helpful in the past to move them some things forward. Sounds good. Um, does anyone else have anything about MWC? Not about MWC, but uh, another topic, fiber uh, 5G. Uh, so I'm always uh, trying to figure out because there's two projects that's going to be related. Uh, uh, talked about a lot. One is Linux Foundation's Magma project. Um, other one was uh, Open uh, Networking Foundation's Ether project. Both about 5G uh, implementation, 5G. So, what's the, how does it work together? Or are they independent, competing? What is the difference between the two? I heard the Magma project, and what was the other one? Magma is an A-E-T-H-E-R. That's open networking um, options project. Do you have access to the doc? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, paste in the chat. Yeah. All right. The audio is a little muddy for me. I don't... It may just be on my end. Oh yeah, my my um, it's my laptop. The audio has a problem recently, and I probably need a new laptop. No worries. USB external mic can help extend the life of those uh, an older. 
an older laptop. Okay. Yeah, this posts oh, the Acer. O and N. All right. Yeah, so both both these two about five G, uh, five G five G. So I wonder what's the how do they work together? Um, I'm trying to get to this is kind of a weird page. This is approximate. Is this a uh, magma so it's not a it's not lfn i think it's just a top level lf project magma is this the one that you're referring to although this is the community page yeah, the magma is under the Linux, uh, Linux Foundation network. Oh, it is? Yeah. That's, okay. Magma project. I'm having a hard time getting to the... There it is again, magma core. All right. I haven't really heard much about this since um, it was getting going. Meta Facebook donation originally. The main thing that I recall, so I, I think Magma's uh, 5G core, I didn't know if they're doing any like of course, any of these pieces, like Tom was saying, uh, they could be shrunken down and you cut out pieces to do edge. But I, I didn't think they were as focused on edge. I thought they were doing more of the core, mobile core. And this this part, I thought, was one of the big things that they were doing. The way that the Federation and the way that the different components in the core talked they don't all use um, 3GPP interfaces. Some of them actually use um, gRPC for talking and taking advantage of, of that for some of the features. Have you seen something that's more specific to private 5G for Magma? I know both are pretty active project. Uh, so Magma is from Facebook uh, and it's actually, um, it was actually a kind of a clone of uh, the OMEC uh, project. The OMEC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more, so because OMEC is for telecom only, so I, and, and magma is like going to be more general um, edge computing.
I don't know about any type of um, collaboration between the two projects, Aether and Magma. I'm sure there's people that are work with companies that are working on both. I don't know, you know, about any overlap. So just from a telecom use case perspective, are they quite overlapping each other? Let's see. Um, oh, they're doing different things. Uh, was that a question? I, I missed I missed part of that. Yeah, it's a question. Yeah, I was wondering what because they, they do it both for Tiger 5G, but I, I don't know what they're um um because what we see is is the core, right? So um but for the now but Magma is access network project. So Ether, yeah, so I don't know how much overlap they have between the two projects. All right, maybe something to look into. Um, we are uh, regarding the like the CNF certification best practices use cases. Interested in digging more into private five G. So definitely are going to be talking more and more with projects. So and oh and um, the open networking. We want to try to talk more with them and see what they're doing, especially if this is a newer project. So exploring newer ideas and open to that. If you know anyone or, then we wanna to try to encourage them also to get involved with what we're doing. All right, um, let's see, going back quickly, Connected America, Private 5G, um, there's a lot of events this year that are the 5G related and looking at the topics like this big 5G event. Um, Tom, Victor, y'all planning on going or know anybody that's going to be going to this 5G? It looks like a, a fairly big event. I mean, MWC is humongous, of course, but this one seems to be a pretty big event. T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, and so forth going. This is in May. Uh, I don't know anyone going. I think it's unlikely that someone from Vodafone would go just because of the location. All right. Some of the topics, if you check it out, could be interesting enough um, that there may be enough discussion and with y'all having like demoing a product and there may be a reason for yeah, yeah, him. yeah. I'll have a look see if there's a remote option as well. Um, yeah, sounds good. MWC, we would have liked to had some presence from like CNCF, a bit. There were a few people that went to MWC in the EU, but a larger presence and maybe even. You know, I, I don't know if it's demoing um, a table, maybe even something conversations to tie people back to the working group, but considering um, something for the MWC North America. And let's see, what was the other one? The Telcom TV they're doing events all the time we've been in the past especially before covid had a lot more conversations there was some like interviews and stuff with folks from the i guess it was like the telecom user group and other stuff that i think helped um, bring people in so we should consider some of the stuff that they're doing and this is one of them the Telcos and Public Cloud Summit. May be too late to submit anything or have a conversation, but they have other events which I think we should look at. 
and I'm going to jump back down related to that for KubeCon EU. Victor had put forward having a, a birds of a fe feather session a while back, and I think that would be a good idea. Um, Tom, are you going to be at KubeCon EU? I am planning to be, yes. All right. I think we should set a time and start um, marketing the session, the the informal session. It's not going to be listed, so we'll need to tell people about it ahead of time. And then, of course, we can mention it during Cloud Native Telco Day. I don't know when we want to do it. I can try to find a see if I can find a room or anything ahead of time, but it could be just a hallway, find a table or something that we stand around or sit at. But how much time would we want? Do we want to just meet for a, be available for more like a office hours working time, or do we want to set something more like a working session, like a SIG multi, or I guess it was a working group, the multi, interface um, working group where they did that at the KubeCon and had a, I think that they had like an all day type of thing, but we could do a working session and actually, you know, work on writing up practices, uh, digging into a topic or whatever. What's, what are people interested in for this? Do we have some topics that we have, want to discuss in that? Like, I mean, in case that there's not too much in the brainstorming. I mean, I was thinking about like, for example, proposing um, to discuss about the, the, the scope of the, the group, like uh, if we are going to consider uh, onboarding or and best practices in that particular area. During the session time or ahead of time, Victor, as far as? D during the session time. Brainstorm and research or, or what are you saying? No, uh, besides uh, brainstorming, uh, probably just having some backup uh, topics to discuss uh, other few things. Just in case that there is no one <laughs> um, initiating the like a I don't know icebreaker or something like that. Yeah, I think for the for the working session, I think we'd have to have a very clear um, scope or set of objectives. I think from when, so for example, when I was involved in Anacat, we used to have working sessions at the, um, what are they call the develop and test forums. And I think some sessions were quite open and let's review this document and see what updates we should make. And they, they sometimes didn't flow very well and did, it took a long time to get people to kind of get involved. Whereas if if you if we started with a um there's this particular section or this particular best practice that we want to work on, um, and I think it kind of um focuses people's minds a bit. And so I I think it got more engagement in that that approach. All right. Um, well, do you have any? I think that sound that ties in with this. Have topics ahead of time. 
Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to do it like this. Um, possible topics. So best practice drafts, which we have some, but we could create them. Um, choose practices ahead of time. CNCF glossary, choose um, glossary terms ahead of time. We could do that as well. Um, length of time. So two hour working session. I'm just putting that forward. I'm, I'm considering this like brainstorming on what do we want. Oliver, is there any folks from Matrix going to be there? Uh, I don't don't think so at this time. Most likely for North America instead. Um, anyone else here, Muhammad or Victor Lou? Y'all coming or know anyone that'll be there? Uh, no, really. All right. I don't know that if we can depend on having a remote capability. If 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 it seems possible, then we'll turn something on to allow remote. I guess I'll just put that in. Um, All right, I'm just going to put yes for their interest. Does anyone have any other? Do it, it seems like if we're going to do a working session, we need two hours. But anyways, put whatever forward. A shorter one, longer one, half day. Does anyone have any thoughts on that length of time? I think two hours is a minimum. Um, I think if it's any longer than that, we need to build breaks in, obviously. But uh, I think it depends on how much top, how many topics we want to cover, really. And also the size of the audience, right? Like, I mean, you were talking about two persons, or yeah, I don't know, fifteen or tiny. <laughs> I would, unless we decide that, um, unless we decide we didn't want anyone to bring something else, I'd be willing to have it maybe even like four hour, um, half, you know, half day or whatever. And then we could call it, like a, it's almost like an office hours. It could be birds of feather, whatever, however we want to talk about it and market it. But the the way that I originally saw birds of feather, it was open because people come in and, and put forward whatever topic they want. And it could be five minutes, or 10 minutes or whatever, but you're not going to have, you know, hour long presentation, but it was all ad hoc. But that's more of how we want to market this. If we say that we're going to be there and we're open to people putting stuff forward, fine, but we can have topics chosen and, and then get going and, and you know, whoever is available. But have it more of if we know that we were there, like in office hours, then if people show up, you know, come in and they want to talk about something, then we can start digging in. So if we did that, we can work, have a working session, but we could also have 
maybe more material ready to talk with people that are new to the working group and you know any of the cloud native stuff that we're doing um and by that i mean it could force us to prepare some stuff that's more of who are we what are we doing so we had already talked about this being one of the areas that would be nicer to send people to to get started on here's here's one of the things that we're doing we're trying to publish a list of best practices and being able to communicate stuff so cleaning things up and then have it ready to talk about might be able to even have it like as a this is me thinking through it but if it was like a open office hours we can do a working session on the working group but do it coincided with maybe cncf telco office hours or something like that and have there's someone that one of the folks on the certification testing team that's does a lot of the qa and um talking with people working through issues is interested in trying to help as um, more more of like a workshop type of thing. So we could have an area where if someone's interested in looking into the certification or using the test suite as a tool or talking about what we're doing in the working group, then they can just come in. So we just do it all as one big thing. What do y'all think of that? Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I think it, it broadens the appeal. If we did, if we, some... did it, if we did it in that format, would you would you would you say it would be a longer session? Well, that's where I think it could be like the a half day. Yeah. And we just say someone's gonna be available. Um of course we can still decide we definitely want a working session because we want to move forward on the glossary, you know. But yeah. maybe we go, we're gonna do an hour on that or two hours, whatever. That's fine. But we could say for half a day, we're going to have someone available from the working group to talk and someone available for the certification. And it's just like, here's a place. We don't have yeah. a booth specifically or anything, but I'm, I'm sure we could tell even if we did something like this, we could even tell, probably talk with like the CNCF main booth and say if anyone's asking about telco then send them over here yeah um I, I guess we could even consider this is all this is consideration a whole day so one whole day but you know we'd want to make sure someone's there so you kind of treat it like a booth but an area where we're maybe doing like working session someone comes up and they go hey i'm interested in you know what y'all are doing in these groups and we go okay well, right now we're working on a best practice and maybe they we just go we're going to be doing this for the next hour do you want to we can talk while we're doing it i don't know yeah. something like that yeah i think that makes sense mm -hmm.
we might be able to ask some CNCF projects to come over and just chat about what they're doing and relate it to Telco as, as well. And then if, you know, maybe someone get, decides, hey, I'll hang out and they get involved either with best practices or conversations with other people that come up. Mm, yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Um, I'm thinking not on Telco Day. Um, seems like the logistics of anyone trying to do manage it and do both or whatever at the same time. I'm not on the uh, co-chair board, but it seems like that could be too much to try to do both. Um, I would say another day myself. Does anyone disagree? Togo day is half a day. I mean, theoretically, we could do like a two-hour session or something or a half day, but Yeah, good, good question. I think the the benefit of doing it, so it depends whether people are traveling on the morning of Telco Day. Yeah, that's a good or, um, the, the risk of doing it on the Wednesday, Thursday or Friday is it's a jam-packed schedule anyway. Um, but then also if it's a half day, people drop in and out, that might make it easier. Um, I think it's probably evens for me about whether it's done on telco day or not. Um, I think I'd be happy either way. I'm, I'm certainly available either way. All right. All right, um, well, I'm gonna jump forward. Does anyone have anything else that they think is very important or can, um, can I focus on the pull request and other items that we have? All right, if you have a topic that we didn't get to, um, you can write it in as, to talk about next time or just add it to the agenda please for next time don't want to miss anything that folks want to talk about let's see okay so think yep this is only says one pull request so this is a pull request this is for best practice proposal for not turning on the privilege flag for containers in your pods or your cns So this is related to security and um, specifically stuff like supply chain attacks where a container may either have a bug or an exploit intentional where um, someone could gain access to the container and then try to gain access to the host running the pod. So trying to restrict the access when you're talking about bugs and stuff you may have problems in the container that just inadvertently cause more host problems so if it's not running privilege and a related thing if it can't escalate to have privileges then you're going to add more protection when you're forced to use uh, unprivileged containers, then you have to be more thoughtful in your design of the microservices, which can end up leading you to other practices around um, best practices that we'd put forward around CNS and related, to, I'd say, microservice design that's most compatible with Kubernetes and a cloud, cloud environment. Some environments require you to drop privileges. This says root privileges. Um, Victor, maybe I don't. I 
Were we supposed to update this? This might have been from the non root. Yeah, we 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 got it from there. Uh, yeah. I need to. I I mean I think it's true that on SC Linux by default you're not going to be running privileged containers, but I think that would be a different statement here. So that needs to be updated. But anyways, uh, goals here, non goals. We have the overall proposal. So when you're creating a pod, set the privilege flag policy to false. A little bit more expansion on why this is a good idea. A reference link directly in the proposal to the Kubernetes docs about that. Um, this is related to non-system pod types. So system pods are going to be expected some of them to have privileges. Same set of user stories are relevant to the non-root. Um, best practice is relevant here. And similar caveats about pulling in upstream dependencies. So upstream containers, your, however you're pulling them in, like Helm, the definitions may pull in an image that ends up having a privileged um, pod definition. So that's something to look at if you're doing integrations and deployments and stuff like that. Um, it could be examples or it could be situations where you do want a pod to have privileges, the invoice sidecar, cube proxy, for example. So there may be something there. And I think that would be related to <clears throat> separation of concerns applied to um, security, it ends up affecting that. So if you're splitting that out, here's where we're going to need privileges, then it means your, your entire CNF won't be privileged, but just a, one aspect. And that helps with debugging and isolation and other things. Um, and this is the privilege escalation. So if you have a non-privileged container, but it could be escalated, you may not even intend for it to be escalated, but if there's some type of bug or something, there may be a way for the container to try to escalate its privileges. So you can actually deny those sort of things. So that's a related item to look at. we got a bunch of references around not running containers with privilege flag set to true. A lot of different places, cloud providers and vendors alike. Um, the alternatives and it is testable. So that's an important thing with best practices. Is this something we can actually test easily and feel confident that it's being followed or not followed? And this one is testable and it's actually included um, in the CNF test suite. So. We know it's there and it can be tested in other ways. All right. So I think other than maybe this one, I, it seems like it's ready to go. We just need more reviews and some thumbs up approval. But does anyone have any comments? Oops. Um, thanks, Tom. I don't know why it didn't give you a check mark. Oh, no, it did. So we need a few more check marks. Or we don't even have to have them over here in the reviewers. You can add a LGTM. Oliver, I'm going to add you. If someone wants to be a reviewer, then it, 
if you post a message in here, then I will see your name and I can add. I have to actually go and add you as a um, add the role or whatever, but I can do that. But if you do a, just a LGTM or then that's sufficient for approval in this one. Victor L, Victor Lou, we lost Muhammad. Oliver, have you had a chance or anyone at Matrix to look this one over? Yes, if you, uh, I think you just refresh. I'm not sure if you're getting it or not. Should have gotten it. Uh, I will refresh. All right. Thank you. Well, it's just spinning, so we'll see how that goes. I'm going to post this into Slack. We need, we need more, more people on this. Can I do it here? I don't even know. I don't think here works. Channel. I think they've turned off all of that. All right. <clears throat> well, um, we're at time. I guess the last thing here to say is there's a, some other best practice proposal issues that are here. If you take a look at these, um, got them started. Forgot who put the template in. I think Lucina and somebody, Victor, Tom, somebody, but uh, it's appreciated. That makes it nice to get started. So some of these practices we've talked about in the past and we just didn't have issues. So I put those in for some of these to get started, added some references, some initial content, and then um, I tried to create, I'm hoping I did it for each of them, but create a Google Doc and share that. I think it's just anyone can comment. So even random people on the internet, if they had suggest edits, I think is how it'll come across so we can approve or delete or whatever, but we'll see how that goes. And initial summaries there. We base this on another practice. So the red is just something more of example and we can delete that, but it has some initial content. And I've done that for each of them. So we can continue. If there's any of these that are interesting, then just jump in. Maybe I even need to tag it with something else to get more people, but it does have the best practice proposals. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Taylor. Thank you. See you next time.